Hello, everyone. It's great to see you all. Thanks for joining me this morning for Children's Sunday School. I hope you've all had a great week. This week, we're going to continue looking at the book of Corinthians, which if you remember from some of our lessons before, these are the letters that Paul wrote to his friends in Corinth. And today's Bible story is one of his letters, another one of his letters, where he's very concerned for his friends. He wants to make sure that they know the truth. And where does the truth come from? The truth comes from the Bible, from the gospel. So, we will look at that Bible story in just a minute. But, I wanted to see if anyone remembered the big picture question during this unit. And I have some friends that are going to assist me this morning in our Sunday school lesson. So the big picture question this week, this is Mills and her friend Phoebe. Hi. The big picture question from this unit is, why does the church exist? And we've been saying this over and over each week. The church exists to glorify God by worshiping him, showing his love, and telling others about Jesus. So this is perfect because Paul was one of those people. He wanted to make sure that everyone that he was around knew the truth about Jesus. Thank you, Mills. So let's play a quick game. Let's play a quick game. If you have a piece of paper close by and maybe a pencil, you don't need a whole piece of paper. It can be just a scratch sheet of paper and a pencil. Or you can just think of the questions and the answers in your mind. But we're going to play a little game and I'm going to tell you some interesting information. I'm going to give you some statements, and you're going to decide whether you think they're true or whether they're false. All right? And if you want, you can write a T on your piece of paper or an F on your piece of paper, or you can just think about it in your mind. Okay? This is called, this game is called Don't Be Tricked. So, my first example is the heart of of a shrimp is in its tail. Hmm. I don't know if I really know the answer to that. So think about that. Do you think that that's true? The heart of a shrimp is in its tail or false? Maybe the heart is somewhere else on the body of a shrimp. All right. Number two, a snail can sleep for three years. Wow. So do you think that's true or false? Can a snail sleep for three years? That's a really long time to sleep. All right. Question number three. Slugs have four noses. Slug. I've never looked at a slug that closely. I'm not sure if they have even one nose. Do you think that's true or false? A slug has four noses. The next question. It takes a sloth one week to digest food. Hmm. A sloth. Those are some of my favorite animals. I think they're funny and cute. All right. What about this one? Bats always turn right when leaving their cave. Interesting. Well, I don't really like bats, and so I don't definitely don't know the answer to that, because if I saw a bat, I would probably run and not pay attention to what direction it flew out of its cave. The last one is giraffes have no vocal cords. <clears throat> hmm. Vocal cords are the muscles in your in your throat that allow your you to have a voice for your voice to make noise. So do you think giraffes have no vocal cords or you think they do have vocal cords? All right, let's go back and see what the correct answers to each of these questions are. The heart of a shrimp is in its tail. If you said false, give yourself a check mark for that one. The heart of a shrimp is actually in its head. Huh, isn't that weird? What if your heart was up here? All right, a snail can sleep for three years. If you said true, give yourself a check mark. A snail can sleep for three years. <clears throat> Slugs have four noses. That is also true. So the next time you find a slug, check it out. They have four noses. I would not have known that. It takes a sloth one week to digest food. If you said false, give yourself a check mark. It actually takes them two weeks to digest their food. Bats always turn right when leaving a cave. 
false. They turn left. And lastly, giraffes have no vocal cords. And that is true. I've never heard a giraffe talk. Have you? <laughs> well, anyway, that was a fun game. I hope you got a lot of them right or at least learned something. So it's not always easy to know the truth from a lie, is it? And when you don't know much about a subject, it's easy to be tricked into believing things are false. In today's Bible story, we're going to hear about a group of people who started believing false things about God, which is a really big problem. All right. So if you will, turn in your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And our story today comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Listen along as I read. Paul had shared the good news about Jesus in Corinth. Many people believed the gospel, and they began meeting together as a church. After Paul left, he heard that the believers in Corinth were turning away from the gospel. Other people had come and taught them things that weren't true. The teachers led the Corinthians away from the one true gospel, and Paul was worried, so Paul wrote a letter to the church. Listen, Paul wrote, I care about you, and I want you to be faithful to Jesus and remember the gospel. Paul knew that the people had been tricked by the false teachers, like the serpent in the Garden of Eden that tricked Eve into eating the fruit. Eve had everything she needed, but she believed the serpent's lie and disobeyed God. The Corinthian believers had everything they needed, the good news of the gospel, yet they were turning away to listen to wrong teaching. I'm not a great speaker, Paul admitted, but I know what I'm talking about. Paul relied on God's power to share the gospel. He spent his life sharing the good news, even though it meant facing suffering. Paul didn't share the gospel to get something from those who listened. He told them about Jesus because he loved them. Paul wrote, I won't back down. False teachers are trying to spread different messages so that the good news about Jesus won't go out. These teachers are against God, and they are only trying to take advantage of you. Paul spoke up because he knew the truth. If anyone deserves to be listened to, it's me. I've worked hard, been thrown in jail and beaten, and nearly died to share the gospel. God had chosen Paul and had changed his life. Paul knew his suffering was worth it, and he wasn't going to give up. I do all of this because God, the Father of the Lord Jesus, deserves to be praised. So, sharing Jesus' word is not always easy. There will always be someone who try to stop the good news from spreading. And God calls us as believers to follow and obey Jesus no matter what. So, right now, I'm going to let you watch the Bible story video. It was time for the Israelites to celebrate Passover. Many Israelites had traveled to Jerusalem to remember what God had done when he rescued his people from slavery in Egypt. Jesus and his disciples traveled to Jerusalem too. When they arrived near Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples ahead into a village. As soon as you enter the village, Jesus told them, you will find a young donkey tied there. No one has ever sat on it. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it. The disciples did as Jesus asked. As they untied the donkey, its owner said to them, Why are you untying the donkey? The Lord needs it, they said. Then they brought the donkey to Jesus, threw their robes onto the donkey, and helped Jesus get on it. People spread their robes along the road, and others spread palm branches cut from the fields. The whole crowd of the disciples praised God with a loud voice for all the miracles they had seen. The King who comes in the name of the Lord is the blessed one. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Hosanna. The word Hosanna means save now. The people knew Jesus was their promised King and they hoped he would save them from Rome. Some of the religious leaders said, Teacher, tell your disciples to be quiet. Jesus answered, if they did not praise me, the rocks would praise me. The next day, Jesus went to the temple complex in Jerusalem and drove out everyone buying and selling in the temple. He quoted the prophet Isaiah and said, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you are making it into a den of thieves. While Jesus was in the temple complex, 
People who were blind and people who were lame came to him. The blind and the lame were not allowed to worship in the temple. Jesus healed them. Other religious leaders saw Jesus' miracle and heard the children saying, Hosanna to the son of David, or our king is here. They were angry and asked Jesus, do you hear what these children are saying? They are saying you are a king. Yes, Jesus replied. The psalmist said, you have prepared praise from the mouths of children and nursing infants. Jesus left them and went to the town of Bethany to spend the night. During Jesus' triumphal entry, the people welcomed him as king. Jesus was the Messiah spoken about by the prophet Zechariah. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. One day, Jesus will return to earth on a white horse as king over everything. So let's think about the timeline here and what's going on. And then we're going to practice our key passage. So lots of the individual Bible stories that we've talked about have Paul writing letters and sharing this gospel. And in this particular story, the truth is the gospel, the new life in Jesus, which we talked about last time. After Paul met Jesus, he traveled around sharing the gospel and planting new churches. Then he wrote letters to the churches to encourage them and follow up with them. Today's lesson was from 2 Corinthians, which is Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth. Paul was very concerned for his friends. And our key passage today comes from Colossians 1. 18, Colossians 1, 18, and it says, and he is the head of the church. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. Colossians 1, 18. And our story point today is God gives us power to stand up for the gospel. That means that sometimes people might be sharing things that aren't true, but God gives us the courage and the power, and he stands with us to make sure that the truth comes to the surface and that the lies won't be allowed to be believed. Okay. Thank you everyone so much for joining in with me today. I hope you're enjoying time in Lent and we're getting closer and closer to Easter, which we get to celebrate Jesus' resurrection, his death on the cross for our sins and his resurrection. So I would like to close with a short prayer. God, thank you for giving us everything we need in Jesus. Help us to guard your truth in our hearts and our minds. Then give us your power to share the gospel with others. Amen. Have a great week. See you next time.